Good morning. How are y'all? I'm going to try one more time. There we go. Um, my name is Rachel Bass, and I'm really excited to be here. I think this is my fourth season to get to speak at Bloom, third or fourth. And I love being here um, talking about an all-knowing God today, and so it's not super emotional, so I can't wait to see what I cry about today. <laughs> we know it'll happen. Um, I wanted to introduce you to my family because that's a big part of who I am. Um, these are my children. Caroline is 22. She is about to wrap up her first year of grad school in occupational therapy. Um, she'll be a doctor in two years, so <laughs> we're almost done with one. Um, True is a junior. He's over there on the right. He's a junior at the University of Arkansas. He uh, is a criminal justice, and I was told this weekend, acting minor, criminal justice major, acting minor. He wants to be a lawyer, so I feel like that's a really good combination. <laughs> uh, Bo is a senior. That's a whole, you know, if you've heard my story, you know how excited we are for Bo to be crossing that finish line. And then Sasha is our baby. She is 16. Um, and I'm going to sound like the Pee Wee football mom who believes her kid will be in the NFL, but um, I kind of think she might make it on Broadway, and that's real fun. Uh, Josh and I have been married almost 25 years, and um, except for this morning, I can tell you that I genuinely love and like him. Um, <laughs> I almost took that part out because I was really mad at him this morning, but um, God has been super faithful to put people in our lives and teaching in our lives and um, to help us balance each other out, and so we are looking forward to 25 years. And um, I will also tell you, it's hard to get all four of my kids together in one place and then to talk them into a picture and then to talk them into a picture that they're okay with me sharing. And so um, this is a miracle, except I don't really love it of me. I'm not fishing for compliments. I'm just telling you, this is a sacrifice of motherhood I'm experiencing now is you take the picture you don't like of you to get the picture you like of your kids. So this is us. Um, and it's kind of crazy because I feel like I'm still going to go pick up a toddler from preschool. Um, but it just goes real fast and sometimes real slow at the very same time. Um, so I wanted to tell you a little bit about what I do because it might help you understand why I was excited to, to choose omni, omniscience, the all-knowing God. Like, why does that excite me? And it really does. My job right now is I'm the director of clinical trial operations for a renal pathology lab. So we look at kidneys and we look at rare diseases in kidneys. And I spend most of my days doing research, encouraging research, talking to people who are doing research, and it's really fun. I love learning. I love to know. I love digging. I say at least three times a week, what did I do before Google? How did I function before Google? Like, I love learning. And I don't I don't think that's a bad thing as long as it's done in a balance. Um, but I can tell you daily, I hit my limits of what I know at work and I have to be willing and able to say, hey, I'm gonna need to take that to a pathologist and then I throw like that, like if you've watched TikTok or Reels on Instagram, the, all the um, Zoom call lingo. So I'm like, I'm gonna have to circle the wagons and like follow up with you. But I really daily hit my limit of what I know and what I'm comfortable even saying on a call to someone because I'm talking to people around the world about um, multi-million, sometimes a billion dollar clinical trials for renal disease and I'm not a doctor. I'm just somebody who likes to learn and I like to coordinate the research. And if I get over my skis and say too much, I'm gonna put myself in danger, I'm gonna put our company in danger, I'm gonna put other companies in danger, and I'm gonna put lives at stake. So knowing what my limits are is super, super important. And I found that to be really interesting as I was working on this, that that's really what understanding who God is and who we are when it comes to how much he knows and how little we know and why that's really a, an amazing and great and worshipful thing. So what is omniscience? I loved this definition. It said that God possesses without prior discovery of facts, complete and universal knowledge 
of all things past, present, and future. This includes not only the actual, but also the possible. Like that part was what really blew my mind is that God knows not just everything that actually is, but everything that could be. And that part of our free will and his sovereignty means he knows what could have happened if we had chosen this. And he knows what could have happened if we would have chosen that. And he didn't learn it and he's not a learning God. He is an all knowing God from before time because he always has been and always will be. And if you simmer in that too much, that's when you know he's all knowing and we're not because we physically just can't comprehend it. It makes your brain hurt if you try too hard. But I love that because as a kid, this shouldn't surprise you as someone who's admitted that I love learning. I loved reading. And my grandfather would come into town and he would take me to Walden Books. It's now a pawn shop on Rodney Parham, but it used to be a bookstore and it smelled so good. And my grandfather would take me in and one of the favorite things that I get would be the choose your own adventure books, right? And so you could like, like here, it says if you head for the workshop to start the building, go to page 57. But if you're gonna look for Jessica, go to page 59. And I loved that because there were 19 stories in one book and they had a little chart on the back. But for the author to be able to do that, he had to know how the book was gonna end to be able to know all of the possibilities that are in the middle. And that's why it is really cool to me and really um, settling to my spirit to know we have an all-knowing God who knows all of the ways it could go no matter what choices I make, no matter what choices my kids make, because he knows how it ends and he knows how it started. He holds everything in between just right there in his hand and he's fine and so we're fine. So an all-knowing God is really cool. Why is it so important for us to understand that? Why is having an all-knowing, all things, all situations, all possibilities, all people, God, something that can cause a problem? Well, it's because if we try to be like God in this way, if we have an unhealthy, non-biblical pursuit of knowledge instead of learning within the bounds that God has given us, three things are gonna happen. One, it's gonna keep us from his presence. Two, it's gonna increase our anxiety. And three, it's gonna inflate our ego. So um, here you go again in researching, trying to figure out like, first of all, did Solomon write all of Proverbs and Ecclesiastes? Guys, they don't know. So just, we don't know. But here's what I will tell you in Ecclesiastes when Solomon that's who wrote it and we think it is, after all of his pursuit of knowledge, after God blessing him and making him the wisest, richest man on earth, here's what he said after all of that. I said in my heart, I have acquired great wisdom, surpassing all who were over Jerusalem before me. And my heart has great experience of wisdom and knowledge. And I applied my heart to know wisdom and to know madness and folly. And I perceive that this is also but a striving after wind for in much wisdom is much vexation, and he who increases knowledge increases sorrow. If what we're pursuing is knowledge for knowledge's sake, it's gonna push us away from the presence of God. We see that with Satan and the angels who fell. We see that in the Garden of Eden, when Adam and Eve decided to be like God and to try to know everything, it cast them out of his presence. And the other thing that it does is it increases our anxiety. So to know enough can make you feel better. Like to know the direction you're going to get somewhere is great. But if you know all of the 50,000 possibilities of the ways you can go, and if you try to figure out exactly what the traffic is gonna be like and what the gas station is and what the gas prices are gonna be and what is traffic gonna be like there and what's the crime rate if you go through this small town, it's too much. And it ends up just being so anxiety filling that it's not helpful to know too much. And that's why God doesn't want us to feel like we have to be all knowing. He wants us to know him and to pursue him. Uh, the book, most, more like, oh, sorry, none like him, my eyes don't work. 10 ways God is different from us and why that's a good thing is a biblical perspective on this. There's also a secular perspective out there by a guy named Ural Noah Harari and I love the fact that um, science and the world end up 
at the end of the day, coming to the same conclusion that we know from God, that more information you have, the more knowledge you have is absolutely wrong. Most information is junk. And they compare it, both of these books compared just seeking knowledge to going to a buffet and basically making yourself sick. You're just overflowing with junk as opposed to finding balance and, and finding um, that, that perfect, and we're not perfect, but that, that good median of seeking knowledge and resting in the fact that we can't know everything, only God can. That's his sovereignty. The other thing it does is it inflates our ego. If you look at how Job's friends reacted to Job, Job's lost his family, his wife, his home. He's lost everything. And his friends come to him and in the most well-intended, scripture-seeking, godly way, they wanna tell him everything that they know for how he could have done it differently so that that wouldn't have been his outcome. And God ends up saying, that's not it. Like, I'm just God. And I did this because I'm God. And you're learning from me because I'm God. And your friends are wrong. And you're not going to find answers in knowledge. We only find our answers in God. You look at the Pharisees. You look at Paul when he was Saul. They were some of the most well-educated, learned scholars in scriptures and in the Bible and in God, and they got it wrong because they relied on themselves and on themselves and on their pursuit of knowledge. We have to rest in our limits, and that's a really hard thing to do, is to be able to say, I don't know, and I'm not gonna know. As a kid, I was terrified of tornadoes, terrified. Like I used to joke that, because it, it would upset my stomach when I saw bad weather was coming that I was gonna die in the bathroom if a tornado ever hit our house. And not because I was in the bathtub with my egg crate, but because my stomach was upset. So I started trying to learn all I could about tornadoes. Like what is a hook echo? And what is the pattern of a tornado? Because I love learning. And I thought that would make me feel better. And it does a little bit, but it also helps me realize I have zero control I can see it coming. I can know when to go and take shelter, but I can't change anything about it. And I know that's some of the all powerful, but the all knowing. I don't know why the atmosphere does what it does. I don't know how to stop it from doing what it does. If I rest in my limits though, I know when to take shelter. Resting in our limits will push us into the presence of God. So if we can look at this verse before we go to the other ones. First John says, by this we shall know that we are of the truth and reassure our heart before him. For whenever our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart and he knows everything. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence before God and whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he has commanded us. Whoever keeps his commandments abides in God and God in him. And by this we know that he abides in us by the spirit whom he has given us. We wanna be in the presence of God. I love learning. But do you know what I love even more than like digging and research and pulling out my books and, and looking up all the answers when I'm on, about to get on a call with one of our, our clients is I love going into Dr. Walker's office and I love sitting down at his desk and I'll just say, Dr. Walker, I'm about to have a call about C3G, help. Can you tell me what you know? Can you teach me? And when I'm sitting in Dr. Walker's presence, I learn so much more than when I'm on the internet or when I'm pulling up a book because he can explain it and he does it with care and he does it from a place of knowledge and wisdom and not just written words. It's like that with God. When we are in his presence, he tells us what we need to know. 
when we're in his presence, we don't have to know and understand everything. We just have to trust his sovereignty and know him. And when you do that, when you're sitting in his presence and you're trusting him, it calms your anxieties. And when our anxieties are calm and we don't feel like we have to know everything because we just have to know him, we can humbly love others. Um, in First Peter, it says, humble yourself therefore under the mighty hand of God so that at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Saying I don't know and saying that that's okay is how we humble ourselves, it's how we calm our anxieties, and it's how we love others well. So what do we do? Because we live in a world that, like, we have information at our fingertips, and we don't even have to look. We can just pick up our phone, and we can ask Siri to find it for us. And even sometimes when you don't mean to ask Siri, she answers you. We've got too much information. And I honestly don't always handle that well because <laughs> I want to know. What do we do when we know we can know a lot, but we don't know what to do with what we know? It's a lot of no's. We have to pursue wisdom. So there's a difference between knowledge and wisdom. And when I started researching all of this and started preparing to, to talk with you, um, when I would put in knowledge, a lot of times wisdom verses would pop up. And I'm like, well, how do I, how do, like, what's too much knowledge? Like, how, what's knowledge? What's knowing? And, and wisdom verses would pop up. And so I think what God was telling me is that we should be pursuing wisdom, not knowledge. And wisdom is different. Wisdom relies on the Bible. Wisdom relies on the Spirit. Wisdom says, I don't know, but I know who knows. Pursuing biblical wisdom calls us to look to the Bible, rely on the Spirit, and consider the created order, which is the way God created everything to proclaim his love and faithfulness. If everything we do is supposed to point others to Jesus, then saying I don't know points others to Jesus. Saying I know who knows points others to Jesus. Finding that balance between searching and resting points others to Jesus. Information overload diminishes our ability to make decisions. It makes us look like we are in constant chaos and anxiety. It sometimes causes us to change our mind 15 times. And right now in the midst of all that's going on politically, all that's going on with hurricanes, all that's going on with wars, we're never going to know everything. So we just have to know one thing. We just have to know who knows, who holds everything in his hands, who's sovereign, who loves us, who ordained everything, who knew before the beginning of the world, who will know at the end of the world, who put together the best choose your own adventure book of all time. And that's God. It's resting in the all knowing God and that's all you have to know. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, um, I love to learn, and I love that you made me that way, God. And I love that the more I spent time looking into this, the less I had to say. God, when I started, I, I wanted to talk for 40 minutes, but by the time I finished, Lord, you had whittled it down to just shut up and point to me. Um, God, thank you that you know. Thank you that... We are in your, your adventure, your book. And Lord, I just pray that we would rest in your sovereignty, that we would not look to 
have control and answers when you are the answer. Thank you so much for this time and for this day, and I just pray that um, we would point to you in all that we do. In Jesus' name, amen.